Good evening. What a wonderful privilege this afternoon to just share my heart with you. Um, during this week, um, one of the daily encouragements I wrote about the three baptisms. And I would like to just discuss this subject with you this evening because I think it's quite important that as children of God, we exactly understand what God has got in store for us. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit wants to empower us. The Holy Spirit wants to lead us. The Holy Spirit wants to guide us. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit wants to comfort us. But I'm not so always sure that the church understands the meaning of this and how all of this fits together. I want you to get a piece of paper and a pen. And I want you to take some notes this evening because I think it's important that you understand the subject and that you understand exactly what God has got intended for you. The Bible refers to three baptisms. The first baptism is the, the Spirit or the Holy Spirit baptizes us in Jesus. And that's referred to as the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So I want you to remember this. The, the Holy Spirit baptizes us in Jesus. That's referred to as the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And that's referred to as repentance or salvation. The second point is the baptism of water. And normally this is what the Bible describes it. That's when the disciples baptized people once they received Jesus Christ as their Savior. The third one is the um, Jesus baptizes us in the Holy Spirit or with the Holy Spirit. And that's referred to as the baptism in the Holy Spirit or the baptism with the Holy Spirit. So remember when we refer to as baptism of the Holy Spirit, that's where the Holy Spirit baptizes us in Jesus. The baptism of the water. Most Christians are familiar with the baptism of water. And the third one is the baptism in the Holy Spirit or the baptism with the Holy Spirit. The Bible declares in 1 Corinthians 12 verse 13, For by one Spirit we are all baptized into one body, which refers to Jesus, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we are bond or free, and have all been made to drink into one Spirit. So the Bible says that we are baptized in the body of Jesus Christ. The Bible refers then to Matthew 28 verse 19 and says, Go then to all peoples everywhere and make them my disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Spirit, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And baptism in water refers to an act of obedience, an act of faith, and we've decided that we were going to follow Jesus and we're going to follow his commands. And it's a public declaration that we've accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior. The Bible continues in uh, Romans 6 verse 2. It says, of course not, since we have died to sin. So what have happened? We've died to sin. Acts do it for the son, the city Bible. How can we continue to live in it? And that's referring to salvation. Salvation where I've accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. I've accepted to follow Him. The baptism in the Holy Spirit, or the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Remember the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So what happens? The Holy Spirit baptizes me in Jesus. And that's what Romans 6 verse 2 refers to. Then the Bible continues in Romans 6 verse 3 and 4. It says, Or have you forgotten then when we were joined with Jesus Christ in baptism? So what, what the Bible is saying, we are now joined in Jesus Christ in baptism. We are joined in his death. For we died and were buried with Jesus by baptism. And just as Jesus was raised from the dead, by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. And that's the baptism of the water. And I don't want to spend much time on those two subjects. 
I want to focus on the baptism in the Holy Spirit or the baptism with the Holy Spirit. So you can refer to that or you can refer to in or with the Holy Spirit. Matthew 3 verse 11 declares, I baptize you with water to show to you that you have, that you have repented. So remember, the baptism in the water will always follow salvation. You can only be baptized with water the moment you accepted Jesus Christ. The order cannot be swapped around. You cannot first be baptized in water before accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior. So the order is very simple. Accept Jesus Christ, then you are, bapt you are baptized. What are you? By baptized in water, I'm declaring that I've accepted Jesus Christ. I'm declaring that I've been, um, um, I've died with Jesus Christ and resurrected in a new life with Him. He said, but, so I've baptized you with water to show to you um, to show that you have been re um, um, repented, but the one, but, yes, quite important, but, because when there's a but in the Bible, there's always a qualification. One of the more in the Bible is altered the qualification, what for. But the one will come after me, Jesus. So it's John speaking here. John is saying, I will baptize you in water after you've repented, but you need to remember there's one that's coming after me. The one that's coming after me, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And I like that. That word fire shows me, yeah, is something supernatural about to happen. Yes, the supernatural is kicking in. And what we need to understand today is, is there's a lot of people that are happy where they are. They have parked. I've accepted Jesus Christ. I'm baptized, baptized. I'm going to church on a Sunday. I'm coming back. Don't just, please don't ask me more than that. I've been in church. I've read my Bible. I've prayed a little bit. Uh, and that's it. Nothing more. I want to, I want to tell you this afternoon that Jesus has got something more for you in store. The Bible says that Jesus wants to baptize you in the Holy Spirit and he wants to baptize you with fire. God wants to make sure that you're on fire. You need to be on fire for God. On fire for God means that I'm not just sitting where I am. It, on fire for God doesn't mean that I am parked. To be on fire, fire moves. You can see fire, you can smell fire. And the, the Bible says that you just need something small to, to light the fire. And the Bible says your tongue is like a, like a fire. The moment it's been lit, it just spreads quite quickly. And that's exactly with the Holy Spirit. What you need this afternoon is that you've been lit by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Somebody that's on fire for Jesus cannot sit still. Somebody that's on fire for Jesus wants to do something for Jesus. Jesus. They want to get out there and they want to they want to win souls. They want to they will come to church and say, Pastor, what can I do? They want to say they want to they want to work in the kingdom of God. Somebody that's on fire is spreading. Fire always spreads, and the only way you can kill a fire is you need to pour water on it. And you see, that's the work of the Holy Spirit. The moment the Spirit fills you, you are on fire for Jesus. Mark 1 verse 8 declares, it says, I indeed have baptized you with water. So again, I've baptized you with water. John speaking here. But, I like this but. I think a lot of us this afternoon needs a but in our life. Ons het een maar nodig in ons leven. Want jy het gestag neer. Jy het geparkeer. But he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. What you need this afternoon is a, you need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Luke 3 verse 16 declares, it says, John answered, saying unto them, I indeed baptized you with water, but one mightier than I will come. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Wherever you are sitting this afternoon, Tell somebody next to you that I need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. I need the fire of God. Misschien het jy al, misschien is jy gedoop in die heilige gees. Maar ek wil jou sê, misschien het jou vier doodgegaan. Misschien het jou vier in die lockdown doodgegaan. 
Ik dank je Heer dat in hierdie middag dat God jou wil aanraak met nieuwe vier. Waar ook al je zit bij jou is. You need a baptism with the Holy Ghost power of God. So I'm going to conclude this afternoon. The Spirit baptizes us, the Holy Spirit baptizes us in Jesus. That's when we got saved. The disciples baptizes us in water. That's when the old person gets cut off. Jesus baptizes us in the Holy Spirit and that's when we get power to walk into the new. So the baptism of the Holy Spirit is when you get saved. That's salvation. Baptism by the disciples, that's a baptism of water, that's a new creation. A baptism in the Holy Spirit or a baptism with the Holy Spirit, that's when we receive the Holy Spirit and the power of God fills our lives and that's when the supernatural of God kicks into our life. I want to conclude with 1 Corinthians 10 verse 11 of 1 Corinthians 10 1 it says I don't want you to forget dear brothers and sisters so here's an emphasis I don't want you to forget about our ancestors in the wilderness long ago all of them were guided by the cloud Remember, we, the cloud of God, they were glad, um, guided by the cloud of God, which is a type of the Holy Spirit that moved ahead of them. Walk through the sea on dry, dry ground. Walking through the sea. The sea symbolizes water, symbolizes the baptism of water. Just stay with me. In the cloud and in the sea. Walked by the walk in the sea, the water baptism by the cloud, the Holy Spirit. All of them were baptized as followers of Moses. Now, the Bible says they were baptized as followers of Moses. Moses, a type of a Christ, a type of a savior. Moses led the people out of Egypt took them through the sea. Jesus let you out of Egypt, let you out of sin, through the sea, through the water baptism, the Bible says, and so through the, uh, from Egypt, through the water, and the third thing, let by the cloud. The Afrikaans say in Corinthians 10 verse 2, in Amal in Moses, gedoop, is in die wolk en in die see. So dan Moses die verlosser uh, gedoop is in die wolk geleid dier die gees en die see. Die doop van die water. Maar wat so traag is, is dat baie van ons het Christus ontvang, we have accepted Jesus as our Savior. We are baptized in water en daar ons geparkeer. We've parked. The problem is this. The problem is this. If you are parked after you've received Jesus and you are baptized, you will remain in the wilderness because you need the cloud of God to lead you into the supernatural. You need a cloud of God to lead you into the promised land. Wat jy nodig het in hierdie middag hier, is dat die geest van God jou sal lei in sy volle waarheid in. And maybe you received the Holy Spirit, maybe you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, maybe you are baptized with the Holy Spirit, but what you need this afternoon is a new touch of God. En miskien het jy nog nie, is jy nog nie gedoop in die heilige geest nie. En ek wil jou vanmiddag uitnooi, net daar waar jy sit vanmiddag, is om te sê, Heere, ek wil jy aanneem, as jy Christus nog nie aangeneem het nie. Tweede punt is, my laat doop. Maar dit is nie my focus vanmiddag, my focus is eenvoudig dat ek is kind van God, ek is gedoop, maar ek het nodig om aangedoen te word met die kracht van die Heilige Gees. 
en waar jij vanmiddag ook al zit, nooit vanmiddag die geest van de Heer in je leven. Invite the Spirit of God into your, your life. Invite the Holy Spirit. In, you ask God to baptize you in the Spirit of God this afternoon. Now, kom ons bid saam. En dank je ons jemelse vader dat ons daar kan komen hier in middag hier. Lord, that we can just come to you. Lord, we've just heard this afternoon that we can't stop at salvation. We can't stop at the baptism of water. But what we need this afternoon is a baptism in the Holy Spirit. What we need this afternoon is a baptism with the Holy Spirit. And I want to pray this afternoon where people are, where they, wherever they are gathered in their homes, in, with their families, and that they will pray together and that they will just reach out to heaven and ask for the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Lord, I want to pray that you will just fill them this afternoon. I want to pray that you will just empower them. I want to pray, Lord, the Bible says that the Spirit will lead us. The Spirit will guide us. The Spirit will empower us. When we are weak, it's the Spirit that uplifts us. And I want to pray this afternoon with, with, right through the land through South Africa that the Spirit of God will move into each and every household. I pray that the fire of God will empower people in this afternoon. That people will feel the presence of God wherever they are and that the Spirit of God will fill their hearts, will fill their homes, will fill their children, will fill our charges, our churches, will fill our government, will fill our hospitals and that the Spirit of God will move in this country like we've never seen before. We pray it in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare it in the name of Jesus. We prophesy in the name of Jesus and we take hold of the power of God in this afternoon in the mighty name of Jesus our King and our Savior. Amen.